what a blessing it is for us to be here on Father's Day. And I actually, I commend all you fathers that are in here and really everyone, because I know you could be like out eating brunch right now or playing golf or doing something silly right like that, but you're here in church getting the word of God. So may God just bless us all. He says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So may we be rewarded in his word today. That's what we want to be rewarded in, right? In his word. Like the things of the world, those things are just passing away. But the things of his word will remain forever. And so would he fill us up with his word today? Yeah, amen. That's what we're going to be talking about. As a matter of fact, today, how God has given us these amazing scriptures to follow. And it is better for us to follow them than to chase after the things of the world. Because the things of the world are perishing. They're going to perish. So God doesn't want you to go down those roads. God wants you to follow him because he knows following him, everything that you do for him will remain forever, for all of eternity. So he says here in verse 12 of 2 Timothy chapter 3, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Lord, thank you for your word, and thank you that it does this right here. It makes us complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work, thoroughly equipped to come out of the things of the world, and come into the things of God, the things which remain forever. God, would you speak into our hearts right now? Would you re reward every person in this room right now that chose to be here today instead of going off and doing anything else, that chose to honor you today, chose to bless you today? Would you bless our hearts? Would you fill us with your spirit? And would you reveal your word to us you say that the things of the Lord are spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned. Our own fleshly, physical man cannot know them unless you reveal them to us. So God, reveal yourself to us. Would this just be of you? Not of me, not of any other man, not of any other flesh. God, but just of you. Spirit to spirit, God. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we've been discussing how the people of the world don't want the truth. They don't want to be made uncomfortable because that's what the truth does, doesn't it? The truth makes you a little uncomfortable. The truth forces change. You can't stay in the lie. You can't stay walking after a lie once you know the truth. That's why so many times people don't want the truth because they don't want to change. They want to stick in what they know. So instead of learning the word of God and finding the truth, they decide, no, I'd rather just stay in the lie that I already believe. It's a sad, sad state of existence because we know where it leads. It doesn't lead to everlasting life. It leads to everlasting death. It leads to everlasting separation from God. God wants to give you everlasting life. He does not want his children to be separated from him. Who wants their children to be separated from them? God is the same way. He desires that we would come to know him, that his spirit would come upon us and he would draw us in, that we can have eternal life with him forever, forever. It's worth trading everything of this life to have everything of that life. Yeah. You know, it's so often we as Christians, 
can look at other people who have more than us in the world and who's, who, who have things that are going good in their life, and we think, God, why is it this way? Why do all the people that aren't following you have so much? And me as a believer who is trying to follow you as best I can have so little. And so many bad things are going on in my life. I don't get it, God. And we can be resentful of what God is doing. But do you understand that God is a good father? Everybody know that? God is a good father. And God desires to give good gifts. And God knows that those who are perishing only have this life to look forward to. This life is as good as it will ever be for them. But for you, as a Christian, this life is as bad as it will ever be for you. Everything that happens to you here as a Christian, you have to understand, it's not going to get any worse than this. So everything you go through, all the trials and tribulations, all the hard things, things that God puts you through, he's doing that for a purpose. Number one, he's giving to people who aren't following him because he's a loving father. He knows that they're not going to have eternity with him. And so he's going to give to them now. Remember the story of the prodigal son? There was a father who had two sons. One son did what the father asked him and was obedient. The other son wasn't obedient. And he wanted to chase after the things of the world. So he went to his father and said, Father, give me my inheritance now. I know you haven't died yet, but I want my inheritance now because I want to go and chase after the things of the world. At first glance, this is not a good idea. Why? Because you know your son is going to get in trouble with that money. But the father, out of love for his son, gave him his inheritance. And the son took it and ran out and squandered it, lavish and wild living, until finally he ends up in utter poverty and he's feeding pigs, and he longed to eat the food that he was giving to the pigs. And finally, he comes to his senses and says, hmm, even my father's servants, my father's slaves, eat better than I do. Maybe I should go back and give myself as a slave to my father and be obedient to him. Amazing how that worked, huh? So he goes the whole time in his mind saying, I will just go back and be a slave to my father. But when he gets home, his father comes out and runs and hugs him and says, my son was dead, but now he is alive again. And he puts a robe on Puts a ring on him. And even though the son said, I will just be your slave, he said, no, my son, my son. Our father is a good father. He cares for us. He knows what to give us in order to draw us to him. He doesn't want us to be an everlasting separation from him. He wants us to know him eternally. So everything you could give up in this life is worth it. Yeah. Everything. It doesn't matter what it is. Put it in perspective. Think about it in just this one way. In this life, you may get 100 years. You might. If you were chasing after the world, you'd be so excited to have 100 years here. But do you know that the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, where he says we, as his saints, will rule and reign with him, is a thousand years. I have that verse. It's in Revelation 20, verse 4. It says, I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. That's the saints. 
Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. That's in the great tribulation. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Everybody say a thousand years. You might get a hundred years here, but you're going to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. So how many of you would take all the bad things that God might want to give you in this hundred years and trade it for the thousand years of all good things that you're going to have then? That's just a thousand years. That's the start. That's where eternity begins. Yeah, you're going to have that thousand years, but then you're going to have all the rest of all eternity of good things with your good father who has prepared them for you. Jesus said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. You could clap for that. You have a good future in Jesus Christ. It's worth giving all this up. Don't look at the other people who are chasing after the things of the world and maybe getting it. Doesn't matter. That's all going to perish. Everything that you're working for in this life is going to perish. Keep it in perspective. Keep it in priority. It's only the things that are done for Christ that will last. Everything else will disappear. What's worth it? What's worth it? God knows that there is no amount of lavish life that is worth your soul. What good does it do a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit a soul. It does you no good because it's all going to disappear. Your soul is what God cares about. That's what he's doing in your life. I understand that things aren't easy. I understand that as a Christian, you don't get everything you want. And that's hard because you're like, God, you said if I asked you, you'd give it to me. He's a loving father. He knows what to give you to draw you to him. That's what he wants to give you. Sometimes you can't be Jeff Bezos. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't have all the money you ever want. But God says, hey, it doesn't matter because you're going to have more than you could even imagine in heaven forever more than you can even imagine. If Jeff Bezos doesn't come to know the Lord, you're going to have more than Jeff in heaven. Yeah. Let me talk to Jeff. It's true though. You will. You will have more than him. It says in verse 13, But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. There's so many people out there who aren't looking to follow the Lord. Even in the church, they're an imposter. They're just looking to deceive people. And the people are okay with it. And so when they say, oh, yeah, you need to give more money so that I could get this private jet. Do you think that's for you or for them? That's for them. They want to live their own lavish lifestyle, right? They want to chase after the things of the world. They want everything they could possibly have here. They don't care about people. You're just a number to them. How many butts are in the seats today? Let's take a count. What does that matter? If no one's going to heaven, who cares? But that's what they're about. It's just about the money. Look, I I understand. 
there's hypocrisy in the church, okay? Because I are one. But look, God wants to do something so much greater than that. God wants to use broken people in order to draw people to him. It's not about everything in this life. It's about the things of him. Don't be deceived by things that tickle your ears, things that appeal to your flesh. Those things don't matter. B came in this room today and she goes, hey, I'm blessed. And I say, you know, B, that means a lot coming from you. I hope you don't mind me sharing. I mean, B doesn't have a whole lot right now. But she came in and she said, you know, I'm blessed. And I said, B, you inspire me. Because you got so much less than I do. And you come in here saying, I'm blessed. And I come in here going, meh. Meh. God didn't do what I wanted him to do this week. We're so blessed in the Lord. We have so much. Yeah, you might be dead broke. You might be completely poor in this life. But even if you're poor in this life, you are rich because you have the kingdom of heaven coming to you. In verse 14, this is what he tells us. He says, don't be deceived. You must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. That's what the word does for us. It allows us to see the lies of the world and to not be deceived by them. You hear me say all the time, if you want to discern the lie, you have to know the truth. We love that word, right? Oh, you have the gift of discernment. I think you, I think you have the gift of discernment. Yeah, that's true. It is a gift from God. But you know, if you read the Bible, it says it's able to make one wise. It's able to make you see the lies that are out there so that you don't fall into the same things. James 1.5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. I can't tell you how many times in life I've prayed that prayer. I've sat at a crossroads thinking, man, God, I don't know what to do. I'm in over my head. Look at me up here, pastor of this church. People look at me and go, you look like you're 12 years old. Like, what are you doing up here? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, Lord, I'm in over my head here. It's got to be you. And that's what it is. It's got to be the spirit of God. He's the one who does that work. So here's two simple things. Write these things down. These are two simple things you can do to not be deceived by the world. You ever feel like the world's getting over on you? Like they're taking advantage of you? They're smarter than you are, and so they just steamroll you any chance they can? Here's two things. It's very simple. Here they are right here. Number one, what I've been preaching the whole time, you need to learn the word of God. Amen. Number one, the word, he just said, is able to make one wise. It's able to give you discernment. The God of the world, who knows all the crazy woes that are out there, wrote this down for his people that they could know him and get smarter. Wasn't that nice of him? That's number one. Number two, pray before you make decisions. Pray before you do things. God has given you a relationship with him that you could just say, oh God, please help me, and he hears you. How many times have I stood at a crossroads and been like, God, I don't know what to do here. I can go this way or I could go that way. And all of a sudden, the scripture will pop up in my mind. 
And I'm like, oh, he says not to do that and to do this. Thank you, God. I'm going to go this way. And all my friends that went that way got ensnared in something over there and it took them years to get out of it. And I'm like, whoo. Thank you, God. Sticking to the word. And I've been there again and go, oh, Lord, I need help with this one. God, please give me wisdom. What do I do here? I don't know what to do. Please tell me. And he said, don't go that way. Go this way. I'm like, whew. same thing happened again. A bunch of people went that way, got all wrapped up in the craziness, and we were this way. We went around. Okay, thank you. I think Proverbs says that a wise man sees trouble from afar and goes around it. You don't see trouble from afar and go, oh, okay, let's just walk right through it. We'll be all right. No, he goes around it. Look, you, if you're going to pray and you're going to ask God for this wisdom, you better be prepared for what he's going to say. Because chances are, it's not going to be what you want. Let me preface. Okay? I'm not the preacher that told you what you wanted to hear today. I'm the preacher that told you what's going to happen. It's, you're going to pray to God and you're going to say, God, what should I do here? And he's going to tell you the opposite of what you wanted to do. God wants to see how much you trust him. I can't tell you how many times I've prayed that prayer and it's been the most ridiculous thing. He said, go do this ridiculous thing. And I'm like, I don't think that's a good idea, God. Of all the ideas I had, that wasn't one of them. But it takes faith to walk with the Lord. And so I'm like, hey, all right, in faith, I'll just do it. And I seen that the ridiculous thing he had me do actually worked out. And all the other ways didn't work out. And I'm like, wow, that's incredible. You know, like when Peter met Jesus on the beach and it says he came in from fishing all night long and caught zero. Everybody say zero. zero. He caught zero. He's cleaning his nets on the beach. And Jesus walks up to him and says, hey, push your boat back out there. Throw it off the other side. You saw Peter's initial reaction. He was like, Lord, I've been fishing all night long. All the way around this boat, every side. And I caught nothing. But what he said after that is what matters. He said, nevertheless, at your word, I'll do it. He pushes the boat back out, and you guys know what happened. There was more fish that could fill his boat. It started to sink. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to follow God. But when you follow him in faith, he will honor that and he will take care of you. Know his word. Go back to that for me, would you? Know his word. Pray before you make decisions. And be prepared to do. I should add a third one. Be prepared to do what he tells you to do. It's not easy, but be prepared to do it. 